believe. We're relying on you. So welcome everybody. Good afternoon. I'm Yolanda Martin. I'm Associate Director of Communications and Engagement. Today on the call uh, we've got John Bruin, Anne-Marie Newham and Julie Atfield. So handing over to you John to do the introductions. Great thanks Yolanda. Um, afternoon everybody. Um, good to see you all. Hope you managed to get a bit of half term time out to to recharge. Um, I've got quite a few things to um, update on um, and then we'll go to some questions. We haven't got loads of questions um, yet today so feel free to put some stuff in the chat and we'll try to um, cover those off. Um, so first of all um, update on where we are with pandemic and all things Covid related. Um, as I, I know you're all aware, um, it's it's a blooming hard slog at the moment, um, both in terms of case numbers, hospitalizations, uh, and sadly deaths as well. Nationally, the numbers um, remain um, as they are with, as yet, I think we would say little sign of uh, them decreasing. Um, and I know that everybody's really a frustrated with with it and um, the impacts it's having on in in all our lives and um, not just at work but at home too and um, the challenges of managing with PPE and so fortunately myself and the chair Paul and other execs have had the opportunities to um, to to be doing more visits where it's safe to do so and just talking to staff on the front line and the challenges they have to manage every day just managing that is is really really difficult um but met with great professionalism um, and resilience so thank you for that um the different phases of the vaccination rollout is in play you'll be aware and hopefully getting texts to say time for your booster so that's got to be six months gap between your booster and your second dose um, so the six months is up, give it a few days. If you've not heard, um, you can book on, but you, sh you increasingly people are getting texts as well to um, go and get your booster jab. It's really important to do that. Overall, our um, rate um, across the organisation, I think is between 93 and 94% of staff have been vaccinated. Um, so that's a huge, huge thank you to everybody that's um, avail themselves of the, of the vaccination. So, uh, you know, strict adherence to PPE, um, IPC rules and regulations, and vaccination are, are the, the probably the three most important things that you can do um, individually for you, your families, but also for protecting our service users and patients. So, thank you for that. So, it's a really good um, score. Um, our school um, IMS and VAX team are busy um, providing vaccinations to 12 to 15 year olds across the county. Um, I think they've done over 11,000 already. Um, the uptake within that age group has been stronger than predicted. Um, so again, that's that's additional levels of, of protection um, and they're busy um, finishing that off and making sure that everyone's got the offer of a vaccination in that category. Um, so lots of jabbing going on and overall um, some really good um, good inputs into that and some, some good um, results too. Um, I wish I could as ever finish the pandemic bit off by saying, and the good news is, <coughs> um, but at the moment, um, you know, to, to be blunt, there's, this is going to be a difficult few months to get us uh, through the, the winter period into spring. Um, and we'll continue to um, help support staff as, as much as, as possible during that time. So again, thank you for your um, doggedness and perseverance um, during this time. We're not the only ones as again, as you know, by a long chalk, that are in the, the really challenging situation right across the NHS, all the different 
domains, social care, primary care, etc. Um, on that note, I just wanted to, to take a little bit of time and Julie might want to add a few things just to flag. Um, we've reached um, a particular, um, I'll use the word um, appropriately, crisis within some of our acute wards at Highbury Hospital in adult mental health, um, which various sort of measures have been flashing for a month or two, but have come to a head in recent weeks, um, largely centred around um, our challenges to um, make sure that um, we can staff the wards safely. Um, so um, ward managers, staff have flagged it um, appropriately um, and we've got um, a whole load of inputs and actions that we've discussed over the last um, few days to how we can support them. But um, I know that uh, this pertains across the organisation, it's not everywhere, um, but there are pockets where it's really, really difficult. But again, to emphasise, we're, um, we're really keen to encourage people to flag issues because if we don't know where they are, we can't respond. Um, and I think that the, the work that we're going to put into hybrid is a good example of, OK, we could have perhaps been a bit more um, reactive. I could have been a bit more reactive, but now we know um, we'll get on and, and help support staff and so that they can do the job they you know they, they come to work to do but also to to make sure that patients get the right inputs. so um that that's going to be an ongoing piece of work um to stabilize those four wards and intensive care unit at least through until the end of the calendar year um, and i suppose one message from me to to people on the call and to your peers if that if you think you have skills and experience or know people that might want to help out and um, whether it's shifts or other related experience of stabilizing um, these services then um, please get in touch and um, through Julie and um, because we're at that sort of level of you know please if you can help um, put your hand up and um, because this is a, a critical time for us and um, Julie I don't know if you want to um, add any more specifically to that Thanks. Yeah, and um, not too much to add, John. Um, for people that aren't so aware, um, the levels of acuity in our patients coming into inpatient services is really high at the moment. And um, at Highbury for a while, we've had a level of underlying um, vacancies. And we've also got I think, you know, quite worn out staff. I don't just mean at Highbury, I think probably a lot of people are really worn out and there's a lot to to grapple with. I think sometimes things rather come to a head, which we, as John's described, that's where we are now. We've we've tried to do some things to to help, but they've not been sufficient to to ease the situation for for people working clinically and um, we've got a few things in train over the next few days um, that we'll be able to talk to colleagues about um, in coming weeks to try and support more um, and take hopefully some of the pressure um, away a bit um, it's ever a challenge for us about moving resources around you know if you take things from the community and shift them into inpatients. We'll find our community patients unwell um, and needed inpatient care. So we're in a, a bit of a tricky situation, but there are some things that amongst the executive team we've agreed to do this, you know, this week, next week. And there are some things that we're further contemplating um, to follow in the next two, three weeks. So there's some short term things and there's perhaps some things to get us in a bit of a more sustainable um, situation. It's about staffing, essentially. Um, John's right. Um, if anybody can rekindle their love for acute inpatient services, um, we would love to hear from you. And, you know, whether that's a day a week or, you know, whatever, 
Um, also, we're particularly to, keen to hear from um, admin staff as well who fancy a, a stint directly supporting services. So we're kind of entering into that business continuity phase where we're needing to move some resources around because we're not business as usual at the moment, clearly. Um, so again, you know, if you work in support admin services, um, similarly do do get in touch doesn't mean we'll be giving you a nursing job or a psychology job but we've got you know we've got a variety of things that need doing to help support frontline services again so we find ourselves um in that in that situation um so yeah so so we'll be you know be hearing probably a bit more about that across the organization in the next few days thank you thanks julie um and we've already got a willing volunteer there, Mary. Thank you for that. And um, that's a that's a good point that Mary's got within her, um, her comment there. That um, this isn't uh, we will be flexible. So it, particularly around the admin bit, it doesn't necessarily need to be in a nine to five, Monday to Friday. We we can you know now we've got teams that is working really well, um, MS teams that we we can be flexible if you know if it's a, just an afternoon or an evening that works for you. Um, yeah, please get in touch. Um, so thanks for that. Thanks, Julie. Uh, thanks, Mary. Um, uh, to continue with the update, um, some some brighter conversations. So green impact, um, I'm sure you've all been glued to the COP26 um, goings on at Glasgow and some of the stuff that's coming out there, out of there. Um, the NHS committed to um, zero carbon emissions by 2040. Um, and uh, we're all held to account on making sure we've got action plans um, to make sure that's hit. Um, without sticking my neck out too far, I, I wouldn't be surprised if that is brought forward a bit actually, because um, it, it does seem quite a long time away. But um, I know that this topic does enthuse um, a, a large number of our organisation um, and, and staff because it's it's so important isn't it and um, this is just to, to, to flag that we're signed up to national program and um, get get awards can get gold silver bronze and um, there's toolkits that we can use um, to um, collect people's ideas um, get involved and um, help with sustainability reduce waste and um, can sign up to on the Green Impact Connect page um, and or, or also contact the energy and environment team to um, get more details or, or get stuck in. So just wanted to flag that. Critically important um, and will remain so, won't it? Um, I know I'm dipping up about all over the place because um, I'm not very good at categorising things. Um, back to jabbing. Flu, and I don't know whether Anne Maria might want to say a little bit about this. Flu's a good news story because um, it's available. It's really important. Um, we're the the people that know are unsure as to the level of hit during this winter, but that um, it is really important to be aware that the combination of COVID and flu together ha can have potentially um, significant health consequences. It's really important that um, we make available flu vaccination for all our staff. Please. Um, get yourself vaccinated um, and again pass on to your colleagues that um, there's plenty of flu vaccine and the team are out and about um, the board had their vaccinations um, yesterday um, and we again will be um, in a league table and um, called called up by very important people if we're not performing very well won't we Anne Maria? Do you want to add anything else? You're on mute. Um, well, no, I think I think you've said it, but um, it is it is just to say that we can be as flexible as uh, you need us to be. Uh, we can do roving clinics. We've got set clinics. Look on Connect. You can book yourself on. If you've got a big group of people that are, um, um, you know, like a, a ward or an event or something like that, then uh, just get in contact, and one of the vaccinators would be prepared to come out and do one of your events as well. Um, that's how we got the board yesterday. So 
yeah, we can work around you. Um, we're trying to get into the reception areas as well, any of the big reception areas, just to jab as well on, on the hoof as you walk through the doors. Um, but we're, we're there for you. Um, and also, just to, just to reiterate, it's a different system this year. So it's called something like uh, NIMS, OK, which is the National Immunisation uh, Monitoring Service. And basically, the long and short of it is, is if you have your jab anywhere, it will clate and we will know. So don't worry. Um, I mean, there is a mechanism for you letting us know as well. OK, but it, it's about just getting it done. OK, so I'm not precious about you having to do it, you know, uh, in one of our uh, venues. Um, but as long as you have it done, that will protect our patients. Thank you. Um, some good news stories. Um, we have national award winners. Um, um, hopefully you'll have seen on our social media channels, Coral Ward from the Women's Service at Rampton Hospital, accompanied by their Director of Nursing um, to the National Nursing Times Awards in London last week, won in a very competitive category um, and a testament to the brilliant work that, that goes on um, at Rampton and um, on Coral Ward in particular. But it's a, it's, it's a phenomenal achievement to get shortlisted for those awards. They're very com competitive, um, but to actually win um, is a triumph. Um, so I wanted to sort of put my personal thanks into everybody that has been involved in that endeavour because um, mm. it, it, it's fantastic. Um, and Maria, I think, has just recovered from the celebrations. It was a bit peaky for a day or two. Um, in related news, um, I don't think that we've missed the deadline yet quite for the Oscars nominations. Yolanda, is there still time? That's right, there is. There's a question on that. So do you want me to take that question now, boss, or should we leave it till the end and plug the Oscars again then? Oh, let, let's leave people tantalised. Um, but yes, not long to go to um, nominate. Um, really important part of our recognition across the year. Um, I think we've got something like over 140 nominations so far. So don't leave it to ultra last minute. If you've got individuals, if you've got teams of people you think I've been meaning to um, get nominating because we know um, that we've got some phenomenal staff, we've got brilliant teams across the organisation, so let's get recognised and then it's not too arduous to put a few lines together and then um, they'll go into the, um, the, the renewed and refined um, judging process for this year. So, um, and I think the, um, we'll come back to it in the question, but I think the ceremony or the event is, is it in March next year? Probably. Don't know. I can't remember when the ceremony is, John. You must have been the end of this. God's sake. Anyway, good. Sleep. We'll let you know before we finish. Um, and then finally, for me, for this part, um, just wanted to take a little bit of time to um, big up the National Staff Survey. Um, I'm, I'm sure that everybody on the call has completed their 10 minutes of feedback for us. Um, but if you haven't, please look up um, in the inbox. It's online, it's anonymous, and it is vitally important for us to get feedback from as many people as possible about, um, about the organisation, how we're doing, how the, the trust is doing um, overall. Um, we think we've, uh, you know, we get this right. So we know this stuff to sort. Um, we get lots of feedback from different agencies and people, but the more we can get from our people and um, our staff on, you know, whether on the front line in clinical services and um, in the support teams of corporate, it's vitally important. There's an opportunity for free text as well as um, the, the, the number scoring. Um, so please um, pass on to your, your teammates. Um, make them a cuppa and encourage them to fill it in. Um, we've got um, uh, a highly um, beautified trophy um, of response rate to reward teams um, this year. Already been, um, you only win it temporarily on a week by week basis. Um, Mental health services for older people won it the first week. Congratulations to Julie. 
Um, Rampton Hospital won its last week. Um, so I travelled up to present um, with, with an armed guard because it, it's it's very valuable um, piece of silverware. Um, and this week, uh, uh, have we announced um, Yolanda yet who the winner is for? It says that's still top secret. I think if you want to tell people on here, I think that's fine. You're the boss after all. OK, well, I just didn't want to. Um, so as you can see from Julie, um, it's back to um, the Mental Health Services Division. This um, week's response improvement is has been won by the specialist um, services team there. So um, well done then. If you'd like to get your hands on it, um, you know what you've got to do. Um, we're around about 35, 36% at the moment, um, which is okay. It's sort of average for mental health and disability community trusts. But um, last year, we, after three years of improvement, we got, I think, to 54%. Um, but we were the most improved organisation in the country, or one of the most improved organisations in the country. And it'd be great if we could um embed that and perhaps go a little bit further appreciating the the challenging times that we've been in but um joking aside about the value of the trophy and stuff um it, it's probably one of let's say it's the most important feedback um we get within the trust and particularly for the executive team and for me um to know um what staff think um so we might come back to that once more to remind people before the end, but um, for now, Yolanda, um, that's me done. Thank you. Thank you, John. And just to say as well that when we send John out with the trophy, we do also send him out with a supply of biscuits and stuff as well. Um, the first question, Anne Maria, is about the flu jab prize draw that we've announced. And the question is whether this will include everyone who's had the jab outside of the trust. And the example given was local pharmacies. So the good news is it includes anybody and everybody who's had their jab. Um, so we've already drawn on the 1st of November uh, somebody. So we do have a winner for October. I'm not going to reveal it because the person doesn't know. And I know Jordan's going out to take some photos. It is £100 per month for four months um, and, um, and everybody's in it. So be in it to win it. Thank you. Uh, the next question I'm moving over to Julie, if that's OK, Julie. Um, with the publication of the government's coronavirus lessons learned to date, um, What's the, I'm just trying to find the question. Are the exec team able to give us any insight into what lessons the trust has learned from COVID to date? And furthermore, do we have a report? And if so, are we publishing it and when? So quite a few questions there wrapped up into one for you, Julie. Yes, so we've done a lot. Um, I think a lot of reflection and review. Um, there have been specific reports written actually to our own board about this so i think if people remember back we used a survey for all staff to complete and that was called the kiss survey um so sarah fairly led led on that um and the lessons learnt um have all been reported to the board um and there's a lot in there about supporting the front line there's obviously a lot about things like ipc um, and how they, you know, you operationalise um, incident command um, arrangements. So there's a lot in there, um, a lot about business continuity as well. Uh, there's quite a bit in there about staff's experience as well that came through in those reports and some subsequent new ways of working. So, you know, we're all sat here on teams now. Um, we weren't able to do that before, for example. So there's quite a lot um, that's been taken from that. Um, so there, there was a learning report at the November 2020 uh, board and also our strategy committee in January. Um, so that's November 2020 and January 
2021. Uh, there was also a report at the June board um, which focused on the um, health and safety executive standards uh, for management through the, the pandemic um, based on acute hospital learning. So that that's also out there and, and publicly available. Um, John's made reference to it earlier as well. It's not over, is it? So we are still in the throes of, I think, re well, we are purposefully re-reviewing our current arrangements and the continued learning because we're not we're obviously we're not out of this and we we do need to still continue to learn obviously in relation to the national inquiry um we've preserved everything um remotely related to the topic so uh, we'll be no doubt participating in in broader reviews as well so yeah th those um, documents are out there and there for consumption and there will be some more um probably early in 2022 so that's that's where we're at yolanda can i just add a couple of, of, of points to that so to specifically say um any learning work that we do um, as a trust um, through the executive team or that goes to board is is um, it won't be done in private um, the vast majority of board work is, is 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 in the public domain and certainly learning lessons and um, stuff will be because that there was a bit in the question about that um, um, if so, when it was published and when, I, I haven't got a specific date for that, but when it does go to, to board and we have outputs, it will be available and we'll, we, you know, we, we'll flag it so people can see. Because um, it, it, it's important, isn't it, that, that as Julie says, we, um, we do learn both um, from things that have gone wrong um, and from things that have gone well. Um, so I just wanted to add that in to, to that. Thank you. Thank you both for that very comprehensive answer. Um, the next question, I'm coming over to you anyway, John, so stay with your mic unmuted, please. Um, Rampton Staff Gym is open 12 till 1 and 4 till 5, but the protocol now states that staff can't take their breaks during this time, which in effect means staff can't access the gym. I just wanted some feedback as to why these decisions have been made. So if I could hand over to you, John, to answer that. Yeah, thanks. Um, so it's um, more broadly, it's an important point, isn't it, in terms of a part of the offer for um, staff health and wellbeing to make sure that um, we've got a sort of menu of things that, that people can can use that um, help support them in their their jobs, uh, whether it's gym or um, mindfulness or yoga or whatever. Um, so it, the, the question is well founded that I've got a very long answer which I'm not going to propose to to work through but um, in essence that um, there, there's still opportunity to discuss this so Adele Fox who's deputy um, is very happy to speak to people to talk this through and equally happy to to um, change the breaks so this is in this is um, not only related to the gym opening but the amount of time um, that people have on breaks, the ability to have them um, collectively at one go, whether the 30 minutes or two sets of 30 take an hour. Um, the European Working Time Directive comes into it as to whether it's at the end of shifts, etc. So I'm not going to get into all that, um, but um, essentially there is still some um, room for some conversation and Adele Fox is happy to pick that up with people. Thanks. Great stuff, John. Thank you. Um, I have put in the chat, we've only got one more question, which is a question for me about the Oscars. So if anybody has got any more questions, please put them in the chat now. Don't miss the opportunity while we've got these guys in the hot seat. Um, the question was about when does the Oscars close? They close this Monday, the 8th of November at midnight that night. We've already had over 150 nominations, but we know there's lots more out there and we've we've had conversations with staff that are thinking about putting in nominations for others. <clears throat> As John intimated, we've really simplified the process last year and this year. Last year, we managed to get the most nominations we'd ever got. Um, so please don't waste this opportunity. You know, 
everybody loves to be nominated, so please get those nominations in. Uh, Karen, very helpfully from the comms team, put in the chat the date of the award ceremony because I had, couldn't remember, John. Uh, the 31st of March it is, and at least Karen knows what's going on and tries to keep me. Oh, yes, that John, very funny. Um, so, yes, it's already in the chat, John. If you've been paying attention to the chat, you would have seen that earlier. Um, and uh, I'll now hand back to you, John, uh, for your closing remarks. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, oh, and Lynn's put um, something in the chat as well about um, the, the, the link to um, Green Impact. Um, so thanks, thanks, Lynn, for putting that in. Um, contact them if you've got any further questions. Um, so, um, if, are we all done on the question front? OK. Um, the, the Oscars, just to, to emphasise that, is um, the number of people who um, I speak to or receive emails from when they learn that they've been nominated is, is amazing, actually. Um, it gives people a real buzz. Um, they're really well received. So uh, get a nomination, still plenty of time. Um, to remind people, um, if you I know you've already done yours, but um, if you if you set yourself the task of getting five people that you know to fill in the staff survey that haven't already done it by the end of the week, that'll be brilliant. <coughs> Let's try and beat last year's total. Um, and then to finish, um, most importantly, again with a thank you to you all, appreciating um, it is tough uh, right across the organisation. Um, on those visits recently that um, most re recently to our IDD services um, myself and the chair went to um, Mansfield, um, Nottingham, inpatients, day patients and community services and met a phenomenal bunch of, of staff working for the trust and really, really passionate about their, their work. We met some patients and service users who equally were um, you, you could sense that they were being looked after and cared for and treated with um, compassion and respect. Um, and it was, it was heartening to see, despite everything, I know that people are working full on to deliver great services for people. So thank you to you all for that. Um, I think that will conclude um, today's session. Thanks for your, um, for your attention, for your input, and um, have a good Wednesday the rest of the week and uh, look forward to seeing you all soon. Thank you. Thanks Yolanda. Thank you.